continuing to read these dreams. This is from July 18th, 10.26 a.m. on some kind of bus, like a van. Bring out money to pay fare after she begins driving. She tells me to wait. I say, I'm sorry, I apologize. She says, it's all right. So this is like you got on the bus and you're fumbling for your money. The bus starts driving. You, you try to pay the bus driver. She's already driving and um, so it's a distraction or something like that. And so now we have wind. Ten thirty-six a.m. So ten minutes later. Waking up, a dot monster that eats people. Oh, so, okay, so as I'm waking up, I, I kind of see like a little, almost like a little animation, um, which I call a dot monster that eats people. Hand raise, so there's a hand raising up like out of the water, or off, out of the floor even. And the dot monster crawls into an eye and vanishes, and so does the eye. Before this, I'm talking with Brett, but maybe it's not Brett, it's Ron Lee. I realize this is Ron Lee, and I'm not sure why he's linked with Brett. I think it's Ron Lee, and he's disgusted with people, and so am I. He's ready to live alone and swear off women, or not live with women. And I say, I'm right there with you. Before this, some kind of costume I'm supposed to wear after a man a superhero costume, some kind of issue with a part that goes in your pants, like a jock strap style or something. And then I get an image of everyone, they're women, all these women trying to take a purse. With, regarding this one with Ron Lee, something that strikes me is it's living with women, plural. So, um, I believe that this has to do with um, surveillance of women. Eleven twenty-six. I'm born somewhere where I have to fight, freeze, or discriminate. Oh, and then in that Ron Lee one, I says I'm right there with you. So I mean, it's basically telling me he's surveilling me. I'm one of the women that he's surveilling. That's what I think that means. Okay, so then on um, the 8th, again, at 11.26 in the morning, I write, I'm born somewhere where I have to fight, freeze, or discriminate. I'm fighting, but there's some kind of trick trying to also make me discriminate. I was quite fascinated by this one. Um, it was just kind of like an informational tidbit there. And indeed, for most of my life, I've been frozen without knowing it. Assuming that's what it means, just not to get anywhere. <clears throat> Discriminate, I think, has to do with white supremacy. Um, or, or it has to do with um, um, being prejudiced against us. Like this, maybe the I in the stream isn't necessarily me, but um, a certain condition that some people apparently have to live under. So they either have to discriminate against me, or they have to freeze, or they have to fight. Um, <clears throat> so I have chosen to fight. I certainly, you know, if I'm giving choices to freeze or discriminate, I'm going to fight, freeze, or discriminate, I'm going to choose fight. And um, although before that I didn't think I had a choice, I thought it was like, oh, freeze and everything will be okay, but that's not true. If it's freeze, you'll be frozen. Um, So I think this could apply to me, but it could apply to others as well. Because it could apply to me because there's this kind of pressure. There's been a pressure all along not to listen to hip-hop music, not to, um, you know, there's, there's these kinds of people you can like and these kinds of people, that kind of thing, you know, which is discrimination, right? You start people, start picking out, you know, what's, what they think is good for you. Um, that's discrimination. Um, or what they think is good for other people, and then, you know, just then being some retaliating when someone doesn't do it the way they think they should do it and all of that. That's discrimination. <clears throat> um, so, no, I don't choose. I will not discriminate, and I will 
not freeze if I can help it anymore and I was tricked into doing that for a little while basically and um, so yes fighting is definitely the best course of action <clears throat> to you know fighting for the, uh, the rights that you're supposed to have anyway you're not, you know I mean I don't think you're supposed to fight this hard just to have your basic rights met but you sometimes you do and so therefore I you know other people should also be making these choices now clearly I can see why people have switched from fighting to freezing I can understand that why that might have happened but um, there's always a choice you can always change your mind on those things you know just because someone tells you you can't change your mind doesn't make it so do you sometimes have to pay a price for your choices of course you have to pay a choice price for every choice that you make any or every and so I would rather t fight for the you know the right things rather than freeze and allow the bad things to happen or discriminate and be part of the problem. That's my... And then, um, yeah, that's this whole thing of, you know, it's kind of like what I said about this unjust, this whole system being unjust to begin with. Um, you can't just go along with an unjust system if you have any other choice. That's just how I feel. It's never going to get better. It's only going to get worse as long as, as long as they get their way. And they're coming to take me away now, so now I'm getting a quote from Pacific Coast Highway. Editing dreams like their YouTube videos. I see a cat in a surprising place, maybe a motorhome or RV. I say to Chris, look, a cat. The video keeps rolling. Before... And I guess both before and after this, I'm focused on a Campbell's soup can. It's very Warhol, I wrote. I'm focusing the camera. So after this I wrote, maybe this has to do with Tom Harrison's RV. I have a sense of Nicki Minaj, bubble bath, begin to realize the importance of bubble bath. <clears throat> okay, so there's a sense that this is Tom Harrison's RV and um, the only people that I've ever known with RVs are Tom Harrison and my dad's parents. Um, so I think this is just hinting that the most obvious thing, okay, if it's Tom Harrison, and it's not escaped me that Courtney Love's father's name is Harrison also. Harrison isn't a very, is a pretty common name, but it does pop up in the, you know, it's like more, it's a common name, but it pops up in certain ways. Um, so, in 2005, when I basically got thrown out of my residence, my daughter and I both did because of these plumbing issues, which I believe Mike Payne was behind this whole thing. This is an extremely traumatic event, an extremely traumatic event, and I believe there's reasons that I believe Mike Payne was behind the whole thing. Um, so I ended up staying at Tom's in his RV. My daughter ended up staying at my parents you know with much more time there than I normally would have her spend there and my cats were you know since I was living in the basement of my brother's house my cats just stayed there and supposedly could get in and out of my brother's house although he had his own cats and there were some territory issues and things like that it was April so it wasn't that warm yet so that was when princess was you know um killed in the driveway probably with a directed energy weapon must have been. Um, so, <clears throat> in retrospect, I think that everybody knew that was going to happen, and it was a planned thing. And another thing about that, I already talked about stuff like I had a premonition before it happened. Essentially, I started worrying that she was okay like half an hour before my brother called me and said she was killed. <clears throat> the night before, I stayed at that trailer with Tom, and I remember that we watched people versus Larry Flint. It's weird that I remember that, but sometimes when there's a trauma, your memories adjacent to the trauma are stronger. So I remember that we watched that movie the night before, and I probably was thinking about the cat during that time. I mean, maybe, I don't know, but it seems like I felt like I was. Um, so there's potential links to um, Tom 
with what happened to my cat. There's potential links to Courtney with what happened to my cat. There's potential links to my parents with what happened to my cat. And there's potential links to my brother with what happened to my cat. <clears throat> um, and I don't know... Um, you know, I just don't know what to think about people anymore. It's hard to believe that my brother, who loves cats, would be involved in harming a cat. But he might be involved. He might. Um, and everybody around that situation lied. Um, but, my, you know, in retrospect, my parents had a callous. You know, my brother actually seemed distressed by it, but my parents had a callous. Um response to it from my perspective they didn't understand how traumatizing or they probably did but they seemed not to understand how traumatizing it was to me how upset I was about it um, but when I think about Tom you know before that happened when he used to stay over at my house sometimes and watch movies and stuff I remember him taking pictures of the two cats because it was a mother lion was the mother cat and princess was the um, you know adult kitten and they would lie curled up like a yin yang symbol. And cats that are really close will do that. And I remember him taking pictures of that. They're curled up like that. So in retrospect, that could have looked like twins, and he could have, you know, he could have been doing it for that reason rather than, oh, isn't that sweet? Look at the nice kitties. Um, and so when his dog finally died, his dog f fell first and then you know, it kind of makes me think that his dog was also killed his dog was very old but um that was later it's about a year later um so why do people make money off of i mean really why do people make money off of killing pets and and humans um, that i mean you know you can kind of see why someone even the motive between behind but it it must be something very sinister and very sick. It might be that the motive, the ulterior motive, is to traumatize me. But it's from a sociopathic mindset. It's where, you know, all forms of life can be co-opted and into this game and twisted and things and turned into a way of any, anything they can profit off of, they'll profit off of. Then the Campbell soup can has, what does this have to do with the Campbell soup can? Is it actually about Campbell's soup? It might be. I mean, there's a reason it wasn't, Andy Warhol didn't just paint Campbell's soup cans because he liked Campbell's soup. And in fact, some of those paintings had holes in them, didn't they? They had a black, there was a black hole in the Campbell's soup can. So I think that symbolizes to me, it suggests that Campbell's soup was funding something. So maybe Campbell's soup was part of the funding of this. And maybe in fact, it was a trauma intended to create trauma. And that's, that's why it was, you know, something that they're used to doing. Now there also could be a link to my um, grandparents' RV, and um, the fact that Tom had an RV actually kind of, you know, it made him remind me of my grandfather, and that was probably by design, because um, his RV was actually very similar to design to theirs, and it's possible that my grandparents could have, I mean, likely that my grandparents had something to do with my black cat, what happened to my black cat that was done to traumatize, you know, and everybody, you know, and I was asking myself, I think I went, I don't know if I went through this yet or not, who's a butterfly, and in fact, anybody that's been witnessing these events is a butterfly because you've already been traumatized because you've been forced to witness transgressive things, so that's, it would, you know, if you think about it in the terms of the controllers, they want people to be traumatized, they want people to be under their spell, it gives them more power, they want power, and, you know, even if they don't care about it, whoever they're working for wants it, and they want to please them. And then the bubble bath, um, <clears throat> there might be multiple meanings to bubble bath, but I think the meaning that came through to me in this dream, it had to do with just um, hiding, uh, being covered, like clothing, and this mentality that you could be um, watched wherever you are, and so if you have a bubble bath, you can hide in the bubbles, that's what I was thinking about.
and that's um, not acceptable to me. Uh, you know, a person should be able to um, have consent, um, the power of consent over who, who sees them in private situations and how they're seen. Consent and control over their own bodies. And, you know, not allowing somebody in a very publicly visible way not to have consent over her body and how she's seen, portrayed, viewed, or whether she's seen, portrayed, or viewed by not allowing someone to have consent, you're sending a really powerful message about the nature of consent itself and the importance of consent and the, you know, significance of it. And um, you're saying that you can take that, you can just ignore that, you know. It's a very rapey thing. And so people learn from that, you know, not just women who try to adjust, but, you know, men and others who think that it's okay to extend that kind of mentality into other parts of life. And I'm sure that's all by design as well. But um, if you make consent... So one of the things that I'm advocating for is um, the restoration of everybody's rights. Because we don't, you know, it's not necessarily even something to negotiate. There are laws around this. I see a, and then I see two lines like that. And I see a white van, A11 or a whatever, you know, two lines going up and a white van. So this is a twin link. Words, coronavirus explode. And coronavirus capsule. Weird. Um, blowing my nose on Chris's high top shoes. It's just an image. Then Bagby Hot Springs. Then coronavirus. The thing about Bagby Hot Springs is I think my dad took me there when I was a little child. It looks like that's the place he took me to, but he acted like he he called it the Oregon Hot Springs and he never said that he knew where, you know, he never told me the name that I could remember. But then Chris told me he had been there and I looked online and thought, I think that's the place that my dad took me. Image of a Mercedes sign transforms to an X and vanishes. Looking for food for hermit crabs, I find an old hermit crab in parts, like the hermit crab here before. Hermit crab, I then see, has got its shell stuck in some decor. So the hermit crab that's alive, so a dead hermit crab and a live hermit crab. I'm thinking of feeding the dead hermit crab to the live hermit crab. Um, then I see the live hermit crab has got its shell stuck in some tank decor. Dialogue. And she knows... Okay, so I hear these, this dialogue. There's a lot of noise coming right now. Dialogue. And she knows there are a lot of Christians like her. And then in the summer, that's when the killings seem to happen. And then the song that's been coming to me throughout the night is Creep. That song, you know, I wrote it a couple times, but that one, I think it started coming to me and, you know, before I went to sleep and it came to me throughout the night. My Radiohead Creep. I started to think about it and I realized that, of course, Radiohead, you know, all these bands can be de named, bad names can be decoded as well as the songs. So I'm like the Radiohead, right? My dreams are radio, like radio, because they're programmed. <clears throat> and my thoughts can tra transmit as well. Image of Kanye West. Looks like captive in hat. Oh, okay, so I don't remember the name of the character, but um, I call him the Captive in the Hat, the Get Out movie. So it was the character that you see right at the very 
first scene of the movie is he's walking through the neighborhood and he goes, am I going, looking for Edgewood Road or Edgewood Street or Edgewood Lane? And then you hear the Run Rabbit Run song and he gets captured, right? And then he shows up later in the movie at the scene where they're having the party outdoors and the woman and he's with her and he's in a straw hat. And then he's, um, the flash from the camera is a trigger for him. So Kanye West is an image of Kanye West in his clothing, so or in his, you know, in his hat. Looks like that guy. So okay, so that says something. I already know this, but this is like, yeah, this is true. Um, Kanye is being mind controlled. This whole and the bipolar disorder is a big one. I mean, my aunt had that, and I know she was mind controlled. Um, Old Dirty Bastard from Wu-Tang Clan, same thing. He may not have even had, you know, um, bipolar behaviors. I don't, I think, you know, I've seen evidence that Kanye West has had manic type behaviors, right? I've seen it. But it doesn't mean that he's actually bipolar. It means that he probably is being affected by frequency-based mind control. And um, so he's having um, personality shifts that appear to be bipolar disorder. So, um, I just wrote something on Twitter about that from not even remembering that I've had the stream, um, about how I've noticed, um, evidence of drone activity around Cody, Wyoming, which is the vicinity of where his ranch is, that, um, I've seen evidence of drone activity on his um, music videos. I mean, they might even be his drones, but just because he might be involved in it doesn't mean there's a, not other people watching him. It's a whole hierarchy of watching, and not just watching, but attacking. Um, and so I think that's what's going on. I think he's getting beamed in the head with frequency-based weapons. And that's what that's what Get Out was about. It was about, you know, they changed things around. They didn't say exactly how it's done, but it was very close. In fact, m more close than I had realized. For example, this whole thing about switching brains, switch putting your brain into someone else's body and things like that. That's what, I think that's a little closer to things that are actually done than I had realized. I think that that's done electronically. It's not done through surgery, but I don't think. But I think it is done. Chris in kitchen, or maybe not Chris, someone messing with wires, connections, antennas. I'm saying don't connect or disconnect a wire unless you know what it is or what its purpose is. Some of the wires or connections went in long ago and seem and it seems are there for communication monitoring. So I'm getting the song radio head creep again. So yeah, it's like my radio head. And this I think is about implants. Um, so I've been saying sort of repeatedly, I need to get the implants out, but that's kind of shorthand. I don't want, okay. The, the first priority is that my rights are respected. You know, if you want to call it restored, you can call it restored, but you never, you don't lose your human rights and you don't lose your constitutional rights when you're an American citizen born in America, which I am. It doesn't happen that I know of, certainly not for no reason. So, um, my rights need to be respected. That means people need to not be coming into my apartment or my daughter's apartment at night for any reason. I mean, I shouldn't say people, you know, there are people that I think are actually do have my best interest at heart. It is not the police and it is not the FBI. Absolutely not. Um, there's people that might, um, people that come in and go through my stuff or people that go in and actually um, do things to us medically not going to be in my best interest. There's no reason to be doing that right now. Um, if, if I need medical attention, then I should get medical attention in a, um, open manner. Um, certainly not somebody coming into my room and po possibly spreading coronavirus and all that kind of thing. That's my main concern now. 
but I imagine that, you know, the mentality of this, okay, the problem with the police, you know what is, we need to get the police out of our lives, okay, we need the police out. We need the police out, we need the fire department out, we need the hospitals out, or, you know, I don't know, if there's doctors that are trying to monitor us and help us and make sure that we're okay, you know, that might be one thing. But we need the police out. We absolutely need the police out. The police are not there to help us at all. Um, the police have been torturing me. The police, I know it's, you know, it's becoming more and more clear that it's been the police either doing this or protecting this torture and abuse um, and sex trafficking. Um, and FBI also, because the FBI is protecting the police. And the FBI, you know, the FBI is part of this. So they should be gone because they don't, they've already disrespected my rights so much. They shouldn't be, they shouldn't be in my place at all. It should be, you know, if somebody's going to guard me, it should be somebody else. So I've been advocating for a military solution because I just feel that um, that's kind of where this originates from. They put it into the hands of other people that are um, using it for abusive purposes. Um, and then as far as like the implants, so I don't want anybody in messing with my body in any way. No, 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 that's not what I meant. I meant I want to be taken to a facility where there's doctors that will speak with me and share information with me and explain, give me some history about how these, you know, I think that's, that's only, um, right. So I, you started putting this stuff in my body when I was born. Okay, I understand that. Okay, I accept that. I'm not going to cry and scream that you were doing that to me. That's not the issue. The issue right now is getting safe, getting to safety. Um, and the implants that I'm much more concerned about are implants that um, were either, that are linked to organized crime. Um, and implants that are, you know, for specifically, you know, maybe not secure. So, you know, all this, I need to know more about it before I can say, okay, this implant I, I have a real problem with and I want to address. This implant I'll, I, maybe I can live with under these conditions. This is going to be a process. It's going to take inform, information, informed consent. It's going to take educated ec education. It's going to take truth telling. It's going to take, you know, things that aren't uh, difficult to do, but they just haven't been done yet. It's not going to take somebody, we don't want people coming into my bed and doing surgery on me in the night anymore. So, yeah, I was, I've thought about that, you know, and getting, the, getting some implants out or having some implants addressed. Or, before that even happens, getting the police away from me so they're not, they're not harming, whoever is hurting me in the heart. Whoever's hurting me in the head, there's no reason for that to be going on except that you're trying to assassinate me. That's not legal. That's not my rights. My rights aren't intact when you're trying to assassinate me. Same goes for Chris. Same goes for my daughter. If people are trying to assassinate us with frequency-based weapons, then our rights are not being respected, and that's the problem. We need our rights to be respected. People have been on this big fishing expedition to see if they can find get some dirt on us. They really don't. They can make up dirt. They can make it look like there's something really wrong. But, I mean, really, no. You don't really have any dirt on us. You really don't. You really, really, really don't. Because I'm not dirty. Not that way. Not really any way. Um, people might have made stuff up, but that's... That's the problem with the, the way the system's set up, that it allows defamation to happen, and, you know, it doesn't give, you know, that's why we have all this stuff written into our Constitution. Due process is due process. Due process is facing your accusers in court. Due process is there are rules of evidence. Rules of due process is you cross-examine the witnesses. Due process is you get to see the evidence, you know. None of that's happening, so that's not due process. And what it is is just libel and slander and, you know, basically um, re-victimizing a crime victim. Um, and I know the FBI has been fishing. Um, I know that they haven't found anything. The best they could do is make something up. And I hope they don't do that because that would be sad. But, um, yeah, it's no, you know, why, why are we waiting to protect us?
fully, I mean, as fully as possible. And why are we continuing to allow these other people to do things that they shouldn't be doing? 1108, 1980s Christmas party, Roseanne show characters all wearing ugly sweaters unironically. Roseanne's sweater is black with a glittery red rose. Black with a glittery red rose was, um, that was, um, I had a, a t-shirt that was like that. I had gotten from Fred Myers on sale once. It had a red rose on it. I think it said Portland on it. No, did it say Las Vegas on it? I can't remember. And then I had a sweater that was similar. It didn't have a red rose, but it had some. Anyhow, um, so Radiohead Creep continues to come through. Words, Lamp, Chrysler. I think I saw Lamp, Chris, C-H-R-Y-S, maybe, and Chrysler. And if I did see that, if I saw Lamp and then Chris, like that, and then Chrysler, the thing about Chris like that is it kind of looks like chrysalis, almost, like a cocoon. Um, 11.20 a.m., Incense burning in bathroom. Chris asked me to put it in his bedroom. He's ill, smoking pot, waiting for a nurse. Yes, Chris is, Chris is ill. We're actually struggling a lot. This is like every day is like terrifying right now as far as our health goes because of all these attacks and the seriousness of these attacks that we're getting right now and knowing how many people have been killed this way. A lot of people have been killed this way. I'm getting shocks to the right temple, vibrations. It's weird they're vibrating inside my body in these weird ways when I'm asleep. I feel like the police are involved in this because I kind of, when I was snooping around the apartment building looking for the, where is this coming from? Where, what's on the other side of my bed and the panels? I felt like I was getting agitation vibes from police sources. So getting the police away from me would really actually probably help a lot the police and the butterflies both then the medical system is also a problem but um the whole business kind of needs to be shut i mean doesn't kind of the whole business needs to be shut down well, the bears right the bears need to be dismantled that bear system it's just a it's just a genocide system and that's all the dreams <laughs>